This is the new Muse Lite 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. And here are my initial thoughts on this budget 3D scanner. Let's check it out. If you are just getting into 3D scanning, I highly recommend that you read my article on antomanson.com where I talk about the difficulty of marketing precision and resolution and help you guide through what you actually need for a 3D scanner. So the Muse reuses the same design from the Seal 3D scanner that was launched on Kickstarter a few months ago. It also comes in two designs, a Moose Light, which is the one I have, and a regular Moose that has blue light technology, while this has near infrared light technology. So that means that the specs that you're seeing right now, uh, I kind of want you to ignore them, although the specs are good, uh, it's not as good as they always seem. More on that later. So basically, the specs for the Moose Light is almost identical to the mole 3D scanner that I just reviewed, but it comes in this new lightweight format. But that's not all. Actually, the price is a huge difference. This on early bird prices that you can watch down below with affiliate links are incredible low. So for budget 3D scanner, I want you to check that out. Prices are like half of the mode 3D scanner, which is pretty awesome. So everything is lined up for this scanner to be a great budget scanner for under $400, but uh, I think it's time that we try it out and see if it's actually that good. So to do 3D scanning, we are using the USB-C cable and connecting it to a computer. We'll be using the same JM Studio software from my mold review, although it's a newer version. If you've seen that video, you'll know that I have some comment about lacking features for making this a professional 3D scanner. But there has been some updates. For example, it's now much easier to recover a scan if you have some slippage within that scan. So you can actually open up and edit a scan and edit all the different frames that have been done in that scan. And if something has started to slipping, you can just remove that section or break it out as a different scan and then align them later, which is a great way of recovering bad scanning data. For everyone new to 3D scanning, the scanning workflow is either by using a turntable like this design, where you put the scanner on a tripod and you let it rotate the object. Or you can use the free hand scan mode where you plug in the cable and then you, you move your hand around the object and track it. In both modes, you first have to set up the exposure of the cameras because these cameras need to see the object and depending on light and the brightness of the object, you have to set that exposure manually. A gray matte object is perfect for this scanning, that's why the turntable is kind of gray and matte. Uh, a white object is working very well as well, but it's actually really good on dark objects. So for example, the joystick and the throttle handle for my flight simulator joysticks, those are really dark and matte black. And this scanner did a really good job of getting those. So just like a camera, it's very difficult to see both light and dark objects at the same time. So if you take a picture from inside a room, outside a window, you'll notice that the windows are usually blown out or the inside is, is not visible. The same goes for the 3D scanner. So if you have an object with a lot of bright and dark areas at the same time, you would want to prepare it with some sort of high quality 3D scan. I recommend investing in a good scan instead of trying out baby talk and all these different solutions because this works very well and it evaporates after a few hours. So basically in the turntable mode, you just set up your object on the, on the turntable, you set your exposure, and then when you initiate, you, you will actually, of course you have to plug in the turntable as well so it rotates, but you can initially scan and it will detect the surface that is the turntable, and then when you stop and put your object on it, it will help you cut away the, the turntable. Again, there's no real tracking of the turntable. Although you have these, uh, these letters and textures, it's actually not using those to track. It's not using a registered stepping motor inside to track exact number of degrees of a rotation. It's basically tracking the physical table. So this means that you, you, you're not getting like a really super high-end turntable 3D scanner. You're, you're getting a handle 3D scanner that you have placed on a table. It's no logic or synchronization between the table and the scanner. So when you're done with the scan, it selects the turntable for you and you can quickly delete it. Clean up the model if you need to, and if you have multiple models, now is the time to align those scans together. Alignment works very well. Um, the automation mode is great, but I usually like to do it manually. It's very quickly to just pick out a few targets. You can even add a fourth target or fifth if you need more than three points of reference. So next up is the fusion process. This is where you take all these frames, all this raw data, and you make one mesh out of it. This is a quite fast process. We now have more settings that we did before. We have the low, medium, and high, but we also have individual settings that I totally don't understand what they do, but I'm sure there are great people in the Facebook groups who will help you figure out exactly what settings are. I haven't had time to figure those out. But as you can see, most scans we generate have a lot of noise. So although we're using a noise reduction, uh, this is just something that seems to be happening a lot, that there are a lot of uh, noise. There are, uh, of course, maybe options that you can do to help reduce that. But 
I would say that you usually won't get a perfect scan. You will usually need to take this out in a third software and maybe smooth out those edges or use the model as you need to. But you're not gonna make perfect copies just like that. So the other way you can do a scan is of course using the handle mode. Uh, you can set up the scanner with the brightness and the exposure for the object and then you're off. Basically you have to do a lot of work keeping the scanner at the right distance. We have a fairly narrow scanning window and a fairly small area. So all the movements are have to be kind of coordinated. And this is something that is for me quite natural because I've been scanning for 10 years. But for many new people it's very difficult to look at the screen and move the hand uh, accordingly. So you might need to practice a lot on this. But hey, it's just data, you can delete it. So if you're on location, make sure you get a few good scans before you just pack everything down and drive five hours home just to find out that you missed something in the tracking. This is one of the difficult things with 3D scanning. Although you have the free scanning mode, it kind of requires more preparation. Because if you want to track a surface like this that is smooth, that's very difficult. You need to add geometry. This doesn't have any markers to add to, to help you track. It's only tracking on geometry and it's doing that quite small. So for flat surfaces, for big car fenders or surfaces that are very smooth but still have some shape, it's quite difficult to track those accurately. You would have to add, for example, uh, wrinkled paper or um, painter's tape or whatever to, to get some extra patterns in that helps the scanner track. So when you're doing something bigger, uh, which I mean, this scanner says that you can scan up to 1.5 meters. I don't think I would scan anything that big with this small scanner. In the best of words, I would have one scanner for big areas, for example, one of the larger models from 3D Maker Pro. And then you add this as details. So you can combine the two scanners in one. So you take one for, for example, the whole engine bay, and then you get this one to take the manifold and the, the, the mounting points, and you can align those together. But to scan a whole engine bed with this scanner, I think that's asking a lot. But again, it's very important to understand that you won't get 0.1 millimeter on a big scan or even on a medium scan. Quite honestly, maybe not even on a small scan. And scanning t a tiny items as well is not going to work because the resolution of the scanner is it's limited. You, you won't actually hit those small details. You won't get that details from the small figurines. And that's just something that's a limit of 3D scanning. It's the optics, it's the quality of the lenses, it's the precision and sharpness of the projector light. You're, even though you can scan and get small details, you can scan small items. Does that make sense? You, you need to have a projected area to actually get some data from. So when you're trying to scan really small items, you don't have an area to project on. So although it sounds like you can get 0.1 millimeter accuracy or resolution, in the real world, when you start to scan, you're actually traveling quite far. And, and for each frame that you're scanning, there will be a tiny bit of slipping. So in this illustration, I try to show you how that looks. That So even to scan like a small area, we need to travel quite far, which means that we were adding errors all the way along. And again, the accuracy is how well can you try to represent the real world object. The scanner says a, like 0 0.03 millimeters for the big moose and for the light one, I think it's 0 0.05. That's not really gonna happen. In a perfect scenario with a perfect distance on one frame and one object, sure, you might be able to get the points within that distance. But as soon as you add frames, that's not gonna work anymore. So again, real world objects, difficult to scan, where there's less features, more features, depending on how far and how, how close you are to objects, you're gonna add to that. So to make a good experiment, we are scanning this one to three inch block again. We are using a scanning spray to make sure that it's uh, white. And when you look at the results, this is actually doing a very good job compared to the mold. Um, Maybe there are some scanning differences in, in my workload, but I use the same flat surfaces and I compare the two edges to each other. It has a distance of 25.569 millimeters between each other and an inch is 25.4 millimeters. But when I measure with my caliper, which is not a high-end caliper, I got 25.49 millimeters. So we are very close on an average thickness of one inch on this, on this one to three inch block. And that's really not bad. And when you look at these images, everything that is within the green area is within 0.2 millimeters accuracy. So that's actually quite approved and quite well done for a not optimal 3D scanning object. And it's also good to know that the moose light does not track very well on people. You can see here, I've tried to scan my face, but it's something about the narrow infrared lights and maybe my skin tone, but it doesn't track or work very well at all, unfortunately. 
And yeah, just to show you, you can get color with this one, or not color, but you can get grayscale. So this is a pineapple. I just scanned it with free scan on the turntable to cover a larger area. And yeah, we get grayscale textures. Cool, I guess. So my review conclusion of using this before the official release for a few weeks is that it's a great budget scanner for everything from around 50 to 500 millimeters. So not for the typical big objects, not for the tiny Warhammer figurines either. Um, you won't, won't get perfect models unless the object is really well optimized and you're doing a great job scanning it. There are some examples on the website which I think are achievable, but they are a little bit of the perfect scenario. So the handle mode again is very good and uh, compared to other scanning techniques it really helps. So having a handle scanner instead of a stationary only is a really good way of, of uh, being flexible in the way you work. So the software has improved as well. Um, it's still not perfect. You can't fix one hole for example or just a few holes. You have to take all the holes in once. Uh, so it, it kind of works but it's not, it's, it's not a high-end software. But more features have been added that makes it a bit more flexible especially when you lose tracking or you slip a little bit in a scan. What's really impressive is how well it does dark objects. This is actually way better than most other scanners that I have tried. Um, it means that you can actually get dark objects without using the scanning spray, as long as it's only the dark areas that you need. As soon as you have some reflection, some screws for example, or some chrome parts on these joysticks, uh, you're gonna have a bad time trying to capture both of those areas. It is almost like white matte objects are almost too bright for the scanner. The lowest brightening settings can still, if you're too close, can still um, overexpose on those items. So with the low price of this scanner and my personal discount code that you can check out down below, especially as an early bird, I see this as a great toy and also like low end professional 3D scanner. I would not call it a professional 3D scanner, but the, the reality is that if you know what you need it for, you can use this professionally for sure. I mean, getting the data for 3D printing products that should stick on objects with uh, curvatures, for example, a bike helmet, a uh, car interior, joysticks, helmets, whatever. It's a great scanner to capture reference surfaces. You can do it for smaller, for larger objects, and it's kind of perfectly paired for what you can 3D print or like the size of the 3D printed product, especially with the FDM printers. With resin, you might want something that can do even better details, but then this is not the scanner for you. So again, for a sub $400 and even lower with the early bird, I think this is a great way to get into 3D scanning, but you should know about the limitations. You're not gonna get 0.1 millimeters on everything. You're not gonna get 0.3 millimeter accuracy on the whole object, but you are gonna get great reference surfaces for continuing working on. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, there are small 3D scanners coming. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.